The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to this learning session. I am Nanja Patrick, your physics teacher. Lesson 6, Standard Instrument 1. Assignment from last lesson. Determine the precision of the following. And by precision, we say the smallest inc increment a measurement or a scale can have. So if you have 1,149 Hz, the precision is 1 Hz. If you have 0 0.07 Hz uh, seconds, the precision is 0 0.01, which is the smallest increment on that scale. If you have 15.00 millimeters, the precision is 0 0.01. If you have 0 0.0700 amperes, the precision is 0 0.01 amperes. Assignment number two. Determine the accuracy of the following measurements. By accuracy, we mean the number of significant figures a measurement has. 1,256 hertz has four significant figures. Hence, the accuracy is four. 300, 3060 millimeters has three significant figures because the last zero after six is not significant, it's just a place value. So the significant figures there are three, zero, and six. So the accuracy is three. Seven, zero, zero, two, three seconds. The two zeros in between are significant. Therefore, we have five significant figures. And 0 0.0700, the accuracy is one. Because then all the other zeros are place values, they are not significant. So we have just the accuracy there is one. We will start with the objectives, the prerequisites, the real life situation, lesson activities, exercises, and assignment. Objectives. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to correctly and accurately read the following instruments. A metal rule, a stopwatch, a balance, a thermometer, a protractor, and a measuring cylinder. Prerequisites for you to better understand this lesson, you should know a bit of base units and derived units, which are lesson one and two. And you want to, to define accuracy, precision, and uncertainty, which we saw in the last lesson. Now, a real life situation has occurred. Measurements play an important role in our lives. For example, during medical checkup, construction of houses or roads, there are precise measurements done during these processes. To ensure that measurements stay within accepted range of accuracy measurements, standards are used. The question is, what is a standard of measurement? So by the end of this lesson, you want to explain what the standard of measurement is and you want to understand what the standard instrument is. The first instrument we will we'll see is the metal rule. It is used to measure distances. It is used to measure distances. This is a simple laboratory metal rule found in our labs. It is used to measure distances. And when we talk about distances, I can measure my height, I can measure the length of a table, I can measure so many types of distances. So distances, just a generalized name for different types, length, width, height, 
radius, diameter, all of these are distances. So the meter rule is used to measure distances. What I have is a one meter rule. One. I call it meter rule because the length is one meter. That's why it's called a meter rule. The length is one meter. Now, on the slide, you can see a zoom of this my metal rule. We want to determine the precision of this metal rule. Now, if you look at this number, this is one year. This is two year. How many divisions are between one and two? If you count with me, you see that there are ten divisions between one and two. Therefore, what will be the smallest increment on this instrument? If I take ten, if I take one, the interval here is one. I take one divided by two, uh, by ten, I should have an increment of zero point one. Therefore, a metal rule increases by zero point one every division. Therefore, the precision of a metal rule is equal to zero point one centimeter. So there are ten spaces occupying one centimeter. And therefore, one space will occupy 0.1 centimeter length. Hence, the precision of a metal rule is 0.1 centimeters. What does it mean? It means that every measurement made with a metal rule must be written to one decimal place. Therefore, if I measure the length of a table and it comes out to be 50 centimeters and I write it as 50 centimeters, I am scientifically wrong. What should I write? I should write it as 50.0 centimeters to indicate the precision of the instrument I am using. And we have seen that the precision of a metal rule is 0.1. It is universal. What does that mean? It means in my studio, the metal rule I'm holding is 0.1 centimeter. The one you are holding also is 0.1 centimeter. It is a standard instrument. We are trying to build scientific standards so that if I measure here in the studio, you measure in your houses, we have the same scientific representation. Okay. So we go to precautions using a metal rule. Now, take for example, I have a measurement we made with this metal rule. The first thing we have to do is to avoid parallax error. What is a parallax error? Reading a measurement at an angle. I have a ruler like this and the measurement is somewhere here. Instead of me looking at it like this, I look at it from above or from below. That's parallax error. Eyes, my eyes replace normal to the reading, to the instrument when taking reading to avoid parallax error. So we say, when you read at these two angles, these are wrong positions. How do you place your eyes? Your eyes should be placed normal to the metal rule when taking reading. Eyes should be placed normal like this. This is wrong positioning. This is wrong positioning. So eyes should be placed normal on the measuring instrument when taking reading of length to avoid parallax error. These are, this is one of the most important precautions to take when using a metal rule. Two, avoid zero and n errors. A metal rule does not start from zero. The zero mark is a few, cent a few distance away from the end. Some metal rules. Take, for example, the one on the screen. You see that the zero does not start from the end. Therefore, measurements should not be made from this end. You measure from the zero mark. So that's why you start reading from the zero mark, not from the end of the ruler. You start reading from the zero mark. Avoid N errors. What does this mean? For example, I may have a ruler that's broken at some ends. I should not take my mass or the length I want to measure and I shift it to the end. I can measure somewhere in between. For example, I want to measure the length of this instrument. And I discover that this part of my ruler is broken. What do I do? Instead of putting my instrument here, where I know that this part is broken, I shift it somewhere in the middle where I can read the end, the two ends, and I subtract the readings to have my reading for that measurement. So always try to avoid zero and n errors when using a metal rule. The next instrument is 
a stopwatch, which is very familiar, it's very familiar around uh, with us. This on the screen we have the analog stopwatch. There are two types found in the laboratory: the digital stopwatch and the analog stopwatch. On the screen we have the analog stopwatch where you start and stop, and it gives the reading. Now let's determine the precision of this analog stopwatch. But before we do that, let's look at the digital stopwatch. The digital stopwatch gives values in with numbers directly. Therefore, you copy the number directly on the screen. But how do we copy the numbers? This first single digit here, this zero here, stands for minutes. This two double zeros, the next one, stands for seconds. And the next two zeros stands for one one hundredth of a second. So you take that divide by one hundred and add to this second. Therefore, technically, it gives you your answer to two decimal places. Therefore, the precision of a stopwatch gives, it is in order of 0 0.01 second. So display has three sets of digits from left to right. The minute, the second, and the centi second. So the precision is 0 0.01 second. So every reading made from a digital stopwatch should be expressed to two decimal places. Then the analog stopwatch. There are 10 spaces that occupy the second. If you look at the analog stopwatch keenly, you see one to two. Between one and two, there are 10 spaces that occupy a second. And one space will be equal to 0 0.1 second. Therefore, the precision of an analog stopwatch is 0 0.1 second. This difference is very important during practicals. When you are given an analog stopwatch, you should not record your values in a wrong precision because you are so used to the digital stopwatch. So you should understand that an analog stopwatch reads values in one decimal place and a digital stopwatch reads values in two decimal places. Now, as a test, what is the reading of my stopwatch? Zero minutes. Can see zero minutes. Can see 59 seconds. And I can see 72 of a hundredth of a second. So what is my final reading? It is 59.72 seconds. Not 59.72. No, it is 59.72 seconds. So we have the minute hand, the seconds, two digits, and the centi second. The next instrument is the spring balance. The spring balance is used to measure mass. And in our laboratory, we have different types. The two are displayed on the screen. We have this one that has up to, that measures up to 500 grams. If you want to read it, it measures up to 500 grams. And we have the other one that can still measure up to 100 grams. All depends. So when you pick a spring balance, first check the maximum rating on it so that you should know how to load it. If you see 500 grams, no one will need with the kilograms. So you read it, read the maximum range on the spring balance. So it is used to measure mass. This is how it looks like in the laboratory. So a diagram of the spring balance and how it works, it will operate using the simple uh, ideas of uh, Hooke's law, elasticity, where a mass is attached and the spring extends, and from the extension, you can calculate the mass of the spring. So we have the hanger. This is the hanger where we attach it. We have the pointer. This is the pointer here. It goes up and down. This is a pointer. This is a pointer here like this. And we have where we attach the mass. We attach the mass here. So that's a simple diagram of the spring balance. Now the triple beam balance. This is the triple beam balance. It's used to measure larger masses in the laboratory. This one, we said that this one has a maximum of 500 grams, the one I'm having. Now, we want to measure larger masses. We use a triple beam balance. It uses the principle of moment to operate. Now, it's called a triple beam balance because it has three, bar, three bars, three bars arranged in such a way that we can vary the masses on them, changing the moments, and hence we can measure any mass we want to measure. From the first scale here, the first scale has up to 10 grams. The second scale has up to 500 grams. 
the third scale has up to 100 grams. So if I combine all of these, I can have a total of uh, 5, 6, 610 grams that can be measured from this one. There are other ones with larger uh, values. So this is how a triple B balance looks like. It's found in your laboratory. Now, how do we use a triple beam balance? Take for example, I have a mass on the triple beam balance. I want to measure it. First, I put all scales to zero. All of them. If I put all of them to zero, it falls down this way. Means I have a mass on it. The first, I have to have a sense of estimate to see. I should be able to look at this and estimate that this thing will be 100 grams. Just to sense the scientific sense of estimate. Now, I can push any of these mass depending on my estimate. First, it's good to push the big one. It falls, means this side is small, so I sense it back. So there are three scales. You can move these three scales differently depending on what you want to measure. So if I move this side to this end, it still falls, means it's up to, it's more than 10 grams. I move this by 20, I send it to 30, send it to 40. It falls this way, means this side is more now than this one. Yes, yes. So I should go like this and describe it. How do we do that thing? Because I have to use my hands to move them. I have to use my hands to move these things. If you have already, I want to. Yes, I have to show. Mm. Because we're not just that, not just describe it. Okay, it's okay. I'll just I'll just demonstrate it uh, one hand. It's okay. Yeah, what you know is that twenty two plus twenty two. Twenty two. From the slide twenty two now. Yes, we'll take that twenty two all over. Twenty one. Twenty one, okay. Why why are we not seeing our own view so that we can know how to arrange ourselves when we are talking? Because mm -hmm. I'm not seeing myself. So. Three, 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 one. Mm -hmm. A triple beam balance. This is a triple beam balance found in the laboratory. It looks like this and it is used to measure mass. It is called a triple beam balance because it has three bars or three beams and it operates using the principle of moments where masses are placed on the bars and you can move the masses up and down the bar to prove to attain equilibrium. And when you are at equilibrium, the pointer points to the mark here, zero mark. This pointer points to this zero mark. You are at equilibrium. So now, for example, I want to measure the mass of this. How do we do that? I send every bar to zero mark. It weighs this way, it means I have more mass this way than this way. Now I have to start pushing. I send this to 10, it does not fall, it means this thing is greater than 10 grams. I can send it back to zero. I send it now to 20, still more. I send it to 30, send it to 40, and you see it starts moving. Therefore, I'm somewhere around the mark. So if I put it like this until I have it fall, so I can bring it back now. And I increase this one until my bar becomes at zero. If my bar stays at zero, what do I do? I add all the values on the three beams. I add the value from beam one, and I add the value on beam two, and I add the value on beam three. It gives me the mass of this object. So again, you place your mass on the pan, you move the three masses on the beams until this pointer points to zero, and you add the three values on the beams. That gives you the total mass of the object. Okay. Now, the digital balance, or the electronic balance, it measures mass. This is an example of an electronic balance that we have. There are other types. In the chemistry lab, the physics lab, we have other types of electronic balance. 
they are used to measure very small masses. Like when you are doing to measure the mass of a wire, to measure the mass of a small marble, we use uh, digital masses to measure. So if I pull it a little bit like this, I see it changing. So this is, an, this is just one example of an electronic balance. The one on the slide also is another example of an electronic balance found in the laboratory. They are very accurate. You write the values the way they appear on the screen. Next is a measuring cylinder. This is a measuring cylinder. There are different types depending on the volume. The measuring cylinder is used to measure volume. And there are different types of measure, there are different sizes of measuring cylinders in the laboratory. The one I'm holding is a 250 milliliters. Even though it is written in milliliters, we know that one milliliter is equal to one centimeter cube. So in physics, we express our measurements in a measuring cylinder in terms of centimeters cube, not milliliters. So the measuring cylinder is used in the laboratory to measure volume. And the various types exist depending on the maximum volume you can measure. We have bigger ones that can measure in a thousand uh, cubic centimeters of a liquid. So this unit it measures in centimeter cube. Now, when you load the measuring cylinder water, you read the manuscripts. The water will curve a little bit like this. You read the manuscripts on the measuring cylinder, not the top of the water. You read the manuscripts of the water in the measuring cylinder. The next instrument is the thermometer. The thermometer is used to measure temperature. And it's a simple glassware with numbers on it. And you can see the mercury thread or the alcohol thread. It's glassware, it's delicate. Therefore, when handling it in the laboratory, you should be very careful not to drop it. If you are unfortunate to drop one, you call the attention of the lab attendant immediately so as to know what to do. Because mercury, the ones with mercury inside, Mercury is dangerous for your health. So immediately you drop the thermometer on the floor by mistake, you call the lab attendant so that he will know, he or she will know what to do with the spilled out mercury. So the thermometer is used to measure temperature. And this is a bulb of the thermometer. We insert the thermometer inside the liquid, the bulb, not the other way around. It is a bulb of the thermometer that is put inside the liquid. And if you look closely to the thermometer, you see that there are two types. In physics class, we use the one degree Celsius accurate or precision. Therefore, between 10 and 20, 10 degrees and 20 degrees, there are 10 divisions between 10 and 20. Therefore, one division stands for one degree Celsius. And don't get confused. The number here is 10, not 1.0. It is 10. You don't read it as 1.0. Read it really all around 10. The next is a protractor. The protractor is used to measure angles. It's used to measure angles. And it is arranged like this. It's used to measure angles. It is divided into degrees. And it has a precision of one degree. Therefore, it, uh, it will matter, uh, a protractor. How do you use it? You place it in such a way that one line of the angle is at the zero mark, the VS, the line S, at the zero mark, and the line V should be on the value that you want to read, and you read the angular separation between these two lines. Always try to make sure that one line is at the zero mark, and one line is at the other line for the angle you want to measure. The projector goes two way around. It starts from zero one way and goes to 180, and starts from 180 and goes back to zero. Remember, angles are measured anti-clockwise. Therefore, this angle cannot be measured from here this way, like this. It is measured from S to V, not from round like this. So we say we have now an, aside, an exercise. The first exercise is give the reading of the following. The arrow is showing what we should read. This is the point. It falls exactly at 1. This looks exactly like our metal rule. It falls exactly at 1. So what should be the reading of this instrument at this point? It is 1. Then what is our precision? What is our precision? 
If I look at my scale, I see that there are 10 spaces occupying one unit. Therefore, my precision will be 1 divided by 10. And our precision is 0 0.1 centimeters. Therefore, that reading is 1.0. And from our class of experimental physics, we add an uncertainty to the measurement, which is plus or minus the precision, 0 0.1. Therefore, this reading is 1.0, not 1. 1.0. And we add the precision, which is 0 0.1 of a centimeter. What would be the reading of this one now? The scale again is in centimeters. And if I look closely, I can see that 10 spaces occupy one unit. So our precision again is still 0 0.1. So if this is 1, 1.1. 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, and 1.7. So it's somewhere around 1.7. That's this is where now the precision comes into play. Remember the class we had on the differences between uh, a random error and a systematic error. So due to the limitation of precision, we will find difficulty in reading some uh, values. But that's why we add the precision to the measurement. So what should be this value? It should be 1.7 plus or minus the precision, which is 0 0.1 centimeters. Now, what are the readings of the following? The first one is, now we look for the precision of such an instrument. We see that this is 9, this is 10. Again, 10 spaces occupying one unit, the precision is 0 0.1. So if you work out with me, the first one will be 10.1, and I add the precision. The second one will be 5.3, I add the, or subtract the precision. The next one will be 2.4, I add or subtract the precision. And the last one will be 8.0, plus or minus 0 0.1 centimeters. Exercise number two. Give the reading of the following B, C, D, L, K, L. What are the readings of the following? B is zero, it falls on the zero mark. So if my reading falls there, B should be zero. But what is the precision? It's one. So I add plus or minus one to the reading. What should be D? D should be 20. C, 50 degrees. L, 110 degrees. K, 150 degrees. F, 180. Please note that angles are measured anti-clockwise. So L cannot be 70 degrees. Because 70 degrees means you are measuring from this direction in a clockwise direction. So the L here cannot be 70 degrees. L is 110 degrees measured from this zero anti clockwise. Next exercise, give the reading of the following again. So, if we follow the same procedure of our previous exercise, we we'll have A to be 36, Q to be 117, R to be 145. Give the reading of the following before and after. Before the stone was put in the measuring cylinder, we read the meniscus of the water level. And the meniscus is 40. But what is the precision of this instrument? We can see that between 40 and 50, there are just two divisions. Therefore, one division stands for 5 centimeter cube. Therefore, my reading is 40 plus or minus 5 centimeter cube. Now, after the water has been put, after the stone has been put, the water is now at 65, still with the precision of plus or minus 5 cm cube. Now, what are the reasons of the following? So, if we follow the same logic of the previous exercise, this is the reading of A. Reading of A is 3, plus or minus the precision. Region of B will be 8.4 plus or minus the precision. Here the precision is 0 
and uh, C will be 2.8 and D will be 4.0. Now the pressure of D has changed because when you look at D, there are 10 spaces between two values. Therefore, the precision of D is 0 0.1 centimeter cube. Calculate the mass for the triple beam balance below. We have three scales. So if I bring my triple beam balance back, as I was illustrating before, we have three scales. So the first scale is, this is a small scale, according to my diagram on the screen, my first scale is somewhere around seven. I have to be very careful to read. So the first one, this first scale here, up one, is at 30 grams. It's the first scale. It's at 30 grams. The second scale, the big one, is at zero grams. Second scale is at zero grams. So the second scale is at zero grams. The third scale is at 7.3 grams. Therefore, what should be our reading? It should be 30 plus zero plus 7.3. That gives us a total of 37.3 grams. Now, the accuracy of a triple beam balance is the accuracy of the smallest scale or the precision of a triple beam balance is the precision of the smallest scale, this small scale like that. And we work out the precision of this small scale, it is 0 0.1 grams. Now, give the reading of the following. What should be the first scale? Of course, zero. What should be the reading of the second scale? 100. What should be the reading of the third scale? You, look, you have to look critically. You see six. There's a pointer there. You don't just read the... No, there's, this is, even though this is a mass moving, but there's a pointer on the mass showing where you have to do the reading. Here like this not at the ends of the mass. So if you read it correctly, it will be 5.6 grams. What is now the reading? I add all. It will be 0 plus 10 uh, plus 100 plus 5.6 grams. And my total will be 105.6 plus or minus 0 0.1 grams. Now, at the beginning of the lesson, we had a real-life situation. That says measurement plane an important role in our lives. For example, during medical checkup, construction of houses or roads. To ensure that measurements stay within an accepted range of accuracy, measurement standards are used. What is a standard of measurement? It is an object or system that bears a defined relationship to a unit of measurement of a physical quantity. That's a standard of measurement or a standard instrument. For example, my thermometer is standardized to the thermometric property inside here, which is the liquid in glass or liquid column. Therefore, it bears a relationship between the unit and the physical quantity. So the physical quantity is expressed in degrees Celsius. My measuring cylinder bears a relationship between the volume of water in this measuring cylinder and the unit in CMQ. These are standards of measurement. These are standardized equipment. Therefore, if I measure a volume here of 150 CMQ, you also should be able to measure that same volume with any other instrument and have 150 CMQ. They are standardized instruments. Such that if you go to a hospital, or you are a nurse in the future, and you are asked to give a patient uh, five centiliters of a particular drug, or uh, five milligrams of a particular drug, these are standardized values of drugs. So you should go to, be able to you understand the meaning of standard of measurement, and prescribe drugs according to their standards. Assignment, give the readings of the following. They are on the screen. Give the readings of the, on, the, on, the, on the following scales. The first one is a triple beam balance. The second one is a metal rule. And the third one is a spring balance. This is a triple beam balance, a metal rule, but it's expressed in millimeters. If you want to see the units, 
and this is a triple beam balance. We have come to the end of this learning session, and our next lesson will be on standard instrument two, where we introduce other instruments of measurements in the laboratory. Tam tam a tonge tam zabike tam 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 a mote tam zabike mane tam bia ninya ne injo bia yen 